What's going on guys? My name is Ryan Snod, it rhymes with odd, and welcome to another video. This week we're covering the four pricing strategies that you can use as a videographer to price your services. This one came by popular request from my Facebook group, so if you're not a part of it, make sure to go join it. It's the Freelance Videographer Community on Facebook. It's a free group that you can join to gain access to a bunch of videographers all over the world and ask business related questions on how you can grow your solo freelance business. So if you're interested in that, make sure to go check that out and we're gonna get into the video right now. In this video, I'm gonna be covering four main pricing strategies, which are hourly rate, a day rate, a value, and then a retainer. So all four of these have different positions within the framework of your business. If you're just starting out, you're probably gonna be more in the hourly or the day rate type of area. If you're more intermediate or more experienced, you're probably gonna be looking more at the value pricing or the retainer side. So we'll cover all the pros and cons of each of these so you can decide which one's best for your business. First up is the hourly rate. When you're first starting out as a videographer, hourly rate is the most common option that a lot of people choose. So a big benefit of doing hourly rate is that you can estimate things a lot faster. So if you know it takes you two days to shoot a video and probably a week to edit it, you can just add the hours up and boom, you have an estimate. That's probably one of the main benefits. There's a lot of cons with running an hourly rate pricing structure though. Number one being that you're capping the amount of money that you can make in a month and in a year. There are only so many hours in a week that you can shoot and edit and if you just fill up your calendar, you've effectively capped the amount of money that you've made. And videographers like us don't get into this field just so we can work an hourly rate because we might as well just go work for somebody else or for a studio or for an agency and just do that as a full-time job. The whole purpose of starting your own business is that you can have exponentially more income and really grow wealth for yourself. So this is something that's really a downside to that. Another downside of having an hourly rate is because all hours are not created equal. It can be really hard to shoot a project that takes you know, just one day, but that one day is super grueling and there's just a lot of stress that comes with that one day compared to something that could take an entire week that's mediocre effort and it's just not really an even playing around when it comes to understanding what your hours are worth. The other downside is that it devalues what you do. Well, this is where you attract a lot of those price shoppers with the hourly rate just because people get in the mode of what's the cheapest I can get the service done and they start comparing you directly with the other competition that they're vetting. Obviously I am not a fan of the hourly rate rate structure but it is a good place to start when you're first starting out in your business. Um, then you're going to probably move into the next step which is more of a day rate. So in terms of the film industry day rates and half day rates are very very common and if you're subcontracting for another studio or another you know shooter or something like that a lot of them just want a day rate. The only time I really give a day rate is if somebody needs me to just shoot say b-roll for another video project or just be a grip or just be a lighting person or what have you. Um, day rates are really good if you're subcontracting but I don't recommend them for clients. What if it's a video for a super large client for a Super Bowl commercial or somebody that's just running, you know, ads with a Facebook campaign or a nonprofit that has no budget? As you can see, all these different clients have different needs and your time in that time period to go shoot for them for eight to 10 hours could be very different in terms of the value. So a benefit of having a day rate, again, similar to the hourly is that it's easy to estimate. If someone says, hey, what would it cost for you to shoot a two day shoot and have three days of edit? You can just quickly estimate that out right away. And a lot of people just have a minimum amount of engagement. So if the client doesn't have, say, $1,000 to spend on a video, they won't even mess with them just because it's not worth their time. So again, day rates are a step up above hourly rates just because you can kind of fill your calendar, but you've really effectively capped how much money you can make, which again is not why a lot of us get into this business. So that leads me to the third option, which is value-based pricing or project-based pricing which is what I recommend most people do. So what value-based pricing does is it prices the project based on the value to the client. To get to value-based pricing, you have to ask some really serious and business-focused questions to your client. I typically run a questionnaire by all my clients that are businesses just so I can better understand what their needs are and what some of the outcomes of the video will produce for them. This is really good for you to understand the ROI of a video or the return on investment. So when a company is looking to create some kind of marketing collateral, they're gonna put X amount of dollars into this production. What they're hoping to get is on the other end, which is the ROI. So really what I like to ask my clients if they have these numbers available is what they predict the ROI of the video will be based on their previous marketing efforts. Because if I can find out that this video will likely produce say $100,000 of revenue for a company and they need what I can do to get them that money, you have a lot more leverage than you think when you're in this situation because they need the creative done, they need it done well, and if it's done well, they will hit that figure, which is their goal for the entire campaign. So knowing this, it's easier for you to position yourself as an expert or a video marketer and say, hey, wouldn't it make sense if you invested 20% of that amount that you're hoping to get 
just to get this thing off the ground or 15% or 10% or whatever it is. Now you're not even talking about days that it's gonna take you to produce because it really doesn't matter how long it'll take you to do. They don't care about how much time and effort you're gonna put into it, they just want the result. And the result's not even the video, it's the ROI or the return on investment that they're gonna get. Whatever the niche is, whatever the goal is, you have to know what the value in terms of dollars is, in terms of what that goal is for that client. It's really hard for beginners to grasp this concept because they're used to just trading time for money. And once you understand that you're not in the trading time for money business, you're trading solutions for the problems that these people have. So when they approach you, they're not coming to you for a video, they're coming to you for a solution for this problem. So that's why I love value-based pricing. That's the pricing model that I follow for most of my projects and it's helped me exponentially make more money. And I've heard a lot of people in certain situations that price it out based on a day rate or an hourly rate and they lose the project because they price themselves so low. If everybody else is coming in with value-based pricing where it's 20, 30, $40,000 for a video and then you come in at like 3,000 because it's only gonna take you 30 hours and $100 is your rate and that's what it is, um, you've effectively priced yourself out of that project. And it's really hard for people to grasp that, especially if they've never worked with a business, but they think of it in terms of how much budget they have allocated and what that investment's gonna get them after they produce a video with you. I really love value pricing. It does take some effort and some knowledge in terms of the business side of things, which is what we're trying to do here with the YouTube channel. I wanna try and educate you guys as much as I can so I can give you some ammo going into these meetings so you don't effectively price yourself out of a project or undercut your prices so much that you're losing a ton of money and leaving it on the table. So the last pricing option that we're gonna cover today is retainer pricing. Now retainers are not just gonna pop up out of nowhere. You're not going to go solicit a business and say, hey, can I get you on retainer to do a bunch of video work? It's gonna take more of a relationship building process with that client. So usually a client will work with you for say a couple months straight and they have three or four videos through every month and that's when you can kind of approach them about doing a retainer. So what, what a retainer is is that the client would pay you X amount of dollars per month and then you would trade either for a certain amount of deliverables for them or you have a certain amount of hours that you've allotted throughout the month to allocate to their business. I recommend just doing deliverables because again, we don't wanna price ourselves based on the hourly rates. We wanna give them the outcome that they want, which in this case would be consistent content. So you would sign an agreement that says, usually for six months or for a year, uh, we agree that they're gonna pay X amount of dollars and I'm going to give them two videos a month, say. It could be a video a week, a video a month, photo, video mixture, whatever it is that they need, you can kind of bake this into the retainer. Retainers are amazing for folks like us because um, you can basically have guaranteed income every single month. It's really great if you're trying to scale your business because once you get, say, three or four retainers, if they're all paying, say, $1,000 a month, you know that you're getting three to $4,000 a month guaranteed. So you can start buying gear based on that. You can start hiring out editors for that. You could start um, booking other projects or take a vacation. There's just so much more flexibility that you have with a retainer. And really kind of that mastery of business is when you have a couple retainers in place and then you fill the gaps when you're not shooting for that retainer with other projects based on value. And that's really when you're gonna see a huge growth in your business is when you have, you know, say three or four retainers that are on for two to $5,000 a month or up, and you've got, you know, a good cash flow of about 10 grand per month coming in your business. That's a six figure income right there. You can go take a vacation between those and not have to worry, or you can really hustle hard and fill the gaps with those value-based videos in between for say five, 10, $15,000 in between and you're well on your way to making half a million, a million dollars a year in revenue for your business. If you wanna learn more about pricing, sales, marketing, and how to grow your videography business, I've created a course to help you do just that. It's called Solo Video Pro. The course contains over 40 lessons on everything from how to start your business, creating an LLC, figuring out your website, to sales, marketing strategies for LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, how to scale, how to manage your time, how to get into the real estate industry, wedding industry, and a bunch of other stuff like that. I'm adding videos to Solo Video Pro every single month, just like this one. We also have a private Facebook group where we're getting a lot of great engagement and you continue to grow, asking questions, learning from each other, and it's just a great community. So if you wanna learn more about Solo Video Pro, just go to solovideopro.com and you can sign up for the free uh, training that we have on the website there or just join directly. So if you're interested, make sure to go check it out at solovideopro.com.
I know everyone's super scared of like attaining wealth and making money and doing all that type of stuff, but I really wanna try and break those barriers down for folks that are struggling with the pricing. So I hope you got a bunch of value out of this video. If you did, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up and let me know in the comment section which one of these ways that you price your own videos or if there's some other way that you go about pricing. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Ryan Snod. It rhymes with odd, and we'll see you in next week's video. Peace.